<laughs> birds chirping behind you is lovely. <laughs> oh, can you hear the birds chirping yeah, behind me? Yeah, nice. Yeah, there's lots of trees around here, so it's quite nice. Um, and you're in your studio in Bath. Yeah. You got a nice view out of your window. It's not like it's a rolling landscape or anything, but it's but it's it, it's um, the light in here is really lovely. And in fact, about about two years ago, I wanted to build because it's east facing, so um, I wanted to build a north facing studio on the sort of that side of the building, on the north side of the building. Um, there was just about enough room. I got plan permission and everything, but I didn't go ahead because it was too expensive I know, <laughs> when it came to it. But I'm really pleased because then shortly after that, I started painting, actually painting the studio scene sort of thing here. Um, and um, and it's been brilliant. It's been, uh, and I was so pleased I didn't do it because this is, it, it, yeah, there's a space, it's a really lovely space to paint. Um, so yeah, that bay a, window features yeah, yeah. heavily in, in your interior paintings. Yeah, so it, it's kind of, um, the light floods in it on, in the morning sort of thing. And so, um, I mean, the whole point of a North Face studio is obviously so you don't get that light flooding in. But um, but it's if you you know because you're I suppose the point of that is to do studio painting. It isn't necessarily you know it's, it's just taken from other material really. But um, so you just want that even northern light sort of coming in. But um, but when it becomes subject, and that becomes very really exciting when the light comes flooding in. Yeah. And it was really weird. It was just like I can't remember when I did the first. I mean, I, I, I painted all some sort of going back quite some time but um of the, the cluttered mantelpiece and things like that but um the actual but actually a sort of you know a, a body of work that's sort of like a sort of serious body of work has been quite a recent thing probably with, with johnny really um you know wiltshire and um um it's uh yeah it's been so it's it's, and it's uh yeah it's quite a recent thing for me but it's been um it's been great yeah i'm really enjoying it yeah. So you were saying earlier to me that you've managed to um, obviously spend quite a lot of time in the studio during this period of lockdown, which rather, yeah. rather suits artists. Um, yeah. What does a sort of a normal day for you look like in the studio, a typical typical day? How do you start? How do you finish? Um, well, I mean, life's obviously changed massively. So you, uh, compare it to what I would use, used to do, which is you know, mainly plein air painting, which is getting on the road at six o'clock in the morning and, you know, just disappearing off somewhere. That's all gone, which is lovely. <laughs> um, but it's, um, so it's really strange. It's it's um, a very gentle start to the day, if I'm honest. You know, I walk the dog out of early doors because, you know, we're not many other people around. And then, um, you know, I'm painting at eight o'clock sort of thing. And it's really, it's it's really kind of really lovely. And, and I'm, as I say, in the mornings, with the light flooding in the studio, uh, it's East Facing Studio. In the mornings, I um, I paint I paint in the studio a lot, and then the day gets broken up. If I really want to sort of like get you know shut it all out, I close the studio door and stick any old music on really loudly, and just crack on. Um, but you know, it's uh, you know I get cups of tea brought to me. It's really lovely. And then you know, lunchtime, we usually Hattie makes Hattie and me have salads, and she makes the salads and all that sort of thing. And, and it's and it's you know we eat out in the back, and the weather's been so wonderful. That it's been it's been it's been really lovely, and it's, when I actually do paint, um, it's because there's more control, because there's more control inside in the studio, and there's a bit more control on light. I've had the opportunity to really try and nail things a bit and get to what I, I sort of refer to sort of lifting another veil and getting closer and closer to a sort of, uh, a sort of reality or, or a, a real feeling of, of what the light's doing and stuff like that. Um, because day on day, it's been. The light has been, I mean, lockdown or not, the light has been so ridiculously consistent and amazing, you know, mm. for the last sort of six weeks. It's incredible. I mean, mm. I, I look on the BBC weather app and it's just wall-to-wall -wall blue sky all the time. And um, so it means that at nine o'clock uh, or, or, or on, on, on Monday, I could be painting, you know, the studio, a bit of light in the studio. And I know at nine o'clock next day, that same flipping yeah, shadow is yeah. going to be there. So, it's, so you can really look into it. And the beauty of that is, and I've, I'm a big a big fan, although I'm a plein air painter and a lot of it is about a la prima and doing things in one go and into the wet, there's a huge energy in doing that. I'm also a big fan of going back and looking again and reassessing what you put down and what you see again sort of thing, you know, like a, a honing, which is kind of how I see painting. So um, it's been really good for that and, and um, a bit annoying because, well, brilliantly annoying because you're never really happy. You never, you know, you can 
you 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 know you look at a painting and I think well it's you know it's it's nowhere near what I want it to be maybe you know that's that's painting really but um so um but but it's that that control and that day in day out uh, sort of rest- it, it, Re, re looking at things um, it, it's been very good and it's very intense mm. so the painting is very intense when it happens mm. but also my day is quite broken up and it's it's quite enjoyable and you know mm. and relaxed as well yeah I mean because as you said earlier you're used to dashing off here there and everywhere and you kind of pop up in various locations and cities and you know Bath and London and Dublin and um, obviously this um, the the recent paintings that you did of New York um, yeah. we were supposed to be showing in New York on the Upper East Side opening in a couple of days time yeah. um, and sad. <laughs> it's sad that that's not happening but yeah. we do still have this incredible collection of paintings um, and we were just talking before we started about you know New York as a as a landscape as, as, a, as a place that you love to paint and I suppose um be interesting to know kind of what your relationship with the city is yeah my it's very much a tourist i've only been i've only visited twice really uh, which was these two trips um a first trip in march and then in in june and um the the, the, the in terms of the, the march trip was quite quick it was um it was just over a week and then june for a couple of weeks um and it couldn't have been more different of course in, in march on the wednesday it was i remember it was it was 20 degrees C on a Wednesday, and then on the Sunday it was minus seven. So it was, I was really sort of like, you know, introduced to New York in a big way, the, the weather side of it. And then, of course, in June it was, you know, absolutely roasting. But um, but it, it's a place that I immediately fell in love with. And, and I actually I always wanted to paint New York. I always have this thing that I, this fear that I'm, am I, am I missing the party sort of thing? And I love painting London and, you know, India and all those sort of things, but... The world's a big place, and, and and so New York's always been there. You know, I've got to you know get there, and and my my um, preconception of what New York was going to be like was completely wrong. You know what the people were going to be like. I thought it'd be quite a brash, quite a noisy, you know, um, uh, in your face kind of place. And to a certain extent, you know, it's very in your face. But um, the people I found extremely polite and very engaging, and there's a huge willingness to and desire to communicate with each other, you know, um, which which was wonderful, really. I mean, um, you know, in lifts, you know, you wouldn't just get a raise of the eyebrow, which we might do. It's kind of, how is your day? There are open questions which you had to answer. And, mm. uh, uh, and I found that really wonderful. And I couldn't, if I dropped a paintbrush, I, I, I couldn't pick it up, quick enough for someone else paints to pick it up. You know, I found it was a really lovely, that, that was a real lovely surprise for me. Yeah, I bet um, you've got people interrupting you a lot. Yeah, yeah, I did. <laughs> Um, but I, but I love that, and I mm. always love that. It's a bit um, scary. You're not part of that place, and um, the beautiful thing about setting your easel up in, in, in the middle of a, in, you know Fifth Avenue or something and, and painting there for two hours is you, you get to meet all the local people, all the people passing by, and people love talking to you and sharing information. And, yeah, it didn't didn't go go over the water at all, but you know the two rivers, uh, and uh, it's just a very geographically very exciting place, and just the way it's kind of laid out, it's just so those different areas of different villages, and it's just just utterly fascinating, and and you know going downtown. I mean, I mainly stayed um, below uh, um, Central Park really. Um, uh, because that was enough. I didn't have time really to go to go any further. We went a little bit into Central Park, but it was um, it was just wonderful. Tribeca and then and then downtown, and then a little bit of over to Brooklyn and Brooklyn Bridge, and it was just it was just uh, I just found it extremely exciting. Uh, place. It just capture uh, so much of the energy of that city, and there's there's something about it has a particular energy, and anybody who's visited it, you know, kind of has a has a a lasting memory from that yeah. um and i think you know the paintings really really kind of speak to you of that that kind of energy um and the light and yeah yeah that's kind of i mean that's kind of that's kind of you say hannah i i, I uh, you know yeah obviously i'm a big 
fan of, of Brenner painting, and I think I think particularly when the weather's cold, <laughs> you get that urgency, and that's mm. one of the beauties of, of, of Brenner painting is that you, you you know you might hit it, you might miss it, I don't know, but you certainly have a go, and there certainly is an energy there in the painting that it's quite suited, I think, probably to New York. You mm. know that you you attack it, you attack the board really. You don't you don't hold back, you can't hold back, you can't carefully draw in and fill in, you can't do any of that really, you've got to kind of slap it on really and and I think that's a you know a good way, you know, New York and I got on well and in that respect in that it kind of, you know, it was a good way to work and it was a good mm. subject to work like that for, you yeah. know, with. You are known for your plein air paintings and, and, and being somebody that, you know, people might bump into whilst they're, whilst they're out and out and about. What is it about the process of painting or the subject that really inspires you? Kind of, what is it that makes you want to stop and and paint, um, and capture that moment in time? Yeah, I mean, it, it, I try not to analyse that too much because um, I'm, I'm not a cerebral painter, really. Mm. Yeah, you know, I don't, I, 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 I try not to. Um, theorize too much about it or, or question why i'm doing something because um it's you know what i i see I, I call it see and put but it's kind of very much a reaction a visual reaction to something and so i i, I you know i'm not a great thinker and so i try what, what my approach is really um quite simple in that i just wander around um and until something tickles me until i see something that i think Gosh, isn't that amazing? Or is something you know interesting? That something just be a parade of shots. So very often it's detail, you know, you know, just just how things you know uh, sit together, really. Um, and um, and very often, of course, it is light, dramatic light. I don't, yeah, I try not to question it. And and and, but that is kind of my that is what I, kind of my work's all about, really. I don't have. I don't have a message in, in such. I don't sit in the studio and try. I'm not conceptual. What I'm trying to say. Yeah. I don't. I don't think up ideas. It's all from out there. So all everything I do comes from seeing stuff. You know, I'm a big believer in in your painting developing by by the process really by about doing it, getting there, doing it, painting it, seeing if it works, seeing what you like, and then going off and painting something else. And very often you'll paint something maybe a bit fiddly maybe a lot of detail you'll get involved in architectural stuff in the morning and then you'll just think christ i just want to chuck some paint on and do something like uh, i think in this collection there's a there's one of um an evening scene i can't remember the exact uh, title um but it's it's kind of eight o'clock in the evening and yeah. it's um it's very much about a, a moment in time the sun's lowering um yeah there's very little architectural detail it's almost an abstract painting the, the, the thing about plein air painting is it's very much about um, inspiration hitting you. You just you don't know what you're going to paint in the morning, so you wander out there until you see something and you go, wow, and then you set up and paint. And are you ever painting from sketches? No, I've, I've done in the past for big exhibitions, I have the odd painting, I've done the odd square, I've done the odd studio painting. Um, uh, so I do, I do it rarely. Um, um, no, I mean ninety nine point nine percent of my work is all done in front of the um, in front of the subject. I, I you know I I'm very I find really struggle at at is it pure painting? It's different old paint, but I'd, what I'd call pure painting, which would be the sort of thing that Fred Cooming does, which is kind of like a tiny little sketchbook, a tiny little sketch, and then you know produces an amazing yeah. painting. It's not how uh, I'd love to maybe come to that one day, maybe. But you know, the way I work now is very much um, I've got to see it and I put it and I see it and I put it and I see it and I put yeah. it. And hopefully, there's some some art it gets involved <laughs> gets gets involved in there somehow. Shall we? But um, uh, yeah, so I, I that's that's very much how, how I work, and I'm so I'm very I, I do struggle, um, you know, working from sketches and and you know, to me, dreaming up paintings really. Um, because uh, I worry about getting into getting becoming contrived in a way, you know, and I think mm. I'd, I'd be I'd probably be liable to. But who knows? Yeah. So what's then the the sort of where do you get the biggest kick out of it? You know, what's what's the kind of most satisfying part of um, the whole process for you? Well, doing it is the most satisfying thing. Mm. Actually, um, trying to get better. Mm. Everyone will say that, you know. But um, and that's 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 really the, it in a nutshell. But once the painting is done, if I'm in terms of feedback, 
one of, one of the one of the things I love more than anything really is not anything very heavy at all, but simply when someone says you captured it, well, you captured the moment. Oh, I know that place, and that's really simple, and it's not arty in any way, and there's nothing heavy in it at all, obviously. But to a certain extent, it's kind of to me, it's kind of what it's all what that's all about. So plein air painting is all about is mm. it's um, it's about seeing a beauty in a place and trying to convey that. And you know, when you find other people that either know that place or still you know connect with that, then that's that's a really big kick afterwards, and that's a really lovely thing. Kind of is a goal, really. I think, mm. for, for, particularly for these sort of paintings, these New York paintings, plein air paintings. Yeah, absolutely. And would that be the sort of advice that you would give to 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 younger painters? Or did somebody did somebody ever impart that kind of uh, knowledge on you, or or leave an impression on you that sort of? But someone probably did. Have. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I, I in my head, it, I I came to it my own way. But we never do come to these things our own way, uh, you know. Yeah, uh, different think... versions. <laughs> There was a piece of advice that actually I, I heard that second hand, which is what Ken Howard said to Richard Pikesley. So Ken, uh, Richard, Ken had taught Richard Pikesley, and it's when and it's really struck, sticks in my head as a very practical thing to say to to painters, and particularly plein air painters, or well, no, painters, painters full stop. And that is, um, he told Richard to just work on small panels in a small way and do a lot. You know, because Richard was struggling at getting back into painting, I think, and he'd done these large paintings. And the problem with get, you know getting back into it or starting out and doing these large paintings is you can get in a terrible, you know, knot. And it's very hard to see the wood for the trees. And a really good bit of advice is just to get out and do lots to a certain extent. It's a really good way of, of, of getting, you know, getting uh, to understand how to put stuff together sort of fairly quickly. And I think, you know, in your life as a painter or as an artist, that's what you do. You do a lot of painting. Mm. And eventually, you don't know what the, uh, you couldn't say it what it is, but eventually you get a visual um, intelligence, hopefully, <laughs> <laughs> that, that, you know, so you become a better painter mm. and you sort of do better paintings. I mean, that's, that's, it. that's always made. The other thing is, another thing I think is a sergeant quote, which I'm always saying, which is just show your notice. Um, I mean, I'm obsessed and bored. A bore, a right old bore about not using photography as a reference. I just sort of do it from life, mm -hmm. and I think because I think we still got a long way to go in terms of seeing and and putting and making paintings out of, out of just seeing things in the flesh. Mm -hmm. And of course, you've got your exhibition at Messam's London later yes. this year. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. we'll all be we'll all be able to see each other and come out of our houses <laughs> by then. I hope. It's, it's fine, um, yeah. Have you started on the works for that? Where are we? Yeah, oh, yeah. phenomenally. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I brilliant. Lockdown has been amazing for that. In that um, I've been painting like a nutter. And, mm -hmm. and um, I mean, a lot of paintings are interior of this studio. Um, and it's been... Um, it's been a real it's been a real treat a real completely different experience for me uh, as I say in terms of that control, you know, and, um, and just concentration and just, you know, just not worrying about, you know, whether Hyde Park is brilliant at the moment or, you know, mm. or, you know, should I be down at the coast? Just, I'm here, I can go nowhere else. Um, so, yeah, I've been painting, painting, painting the studio, painting the inside of our house. Mm. Um, that You uh, did that beautiful painting of Ned doing his homework um, <laughs> that we had in an exhibition last, it was the year before last, it might have been 2018. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. I yeah. Used to um, so I think, yeah, you should encourage your children to, to sit sit more for you yes. you, whilst they've got whilst they're stuck at home well, as you know it's pretty hard they're, yeah. they're, um, uh, and the, they they do they have this thing that oh no as soon as you they notice you're drawing them then they, they get cross you know but mm. but yeah it is it, it's a it, they, they could be good models yeah. i need to um if i could nail them down have you ever done a self-portrait yeah yeah, <laughs> I, I mean, it's all be a couple in that actually. They're, they're very much like she. And I mean, almost embarrassed to say I'm a member of the Royal Society of Portrait Painters because I'm not a natural portrait painter. Mm. And so, um, I, and I put in four works every year into that, and and people always laugh at me. It's always the portraits of my kids ten yards away with their backs to me, sort of thing. So, yeah. so in terms of self portraits, it's the same thing really. It's a sort of a figure in a studio sort of thing, you know. And it's as much to do with getting a figure in a space as anything else um so i've used a, mi a mirror for that um 
Um, so yeah, obviously for a self-portrait, you idiot Pete. But uh, if I do do that a bit, um, shoot, I'm getting back into my charcoal again, which is really nice, mm-hmm. um, which I used to do years and years and years ago. And I just started getting that going again. Um, but yeah, I, 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 there will be some. Yeah, there will be some self-portraits because you know because it's there. It's always there. Yeah. And it's it's become well not very handsome, but it's quite interesting. It's getting you know it's getting it's good landscape in here now. You know. <laughs> What's going to be the first thing you'll do when uh, you're allowed, when they sort of ease these restrictions? What are you going to do when we get out of lockdown? I'm going to find a bit of anything somewhere outside and sell me either outside and get painting, just I don't care where or what. Just get out there and just paint out, out there and, yeah, paint there painting. So I think, so in terms of the our show in November, it'd be interesting whether we just do stick to interiors or it'd be interesting to see when I can get out and what happens after this, you mm. know. Um, I mean, just before lockdown, um, the Thursday before lockdown, I went to London, which I, I probably knew it was going to be the last day I could get up there. And I painted um, I painted um, horse guards, those two, um, the Queen's Gate horse guards um, parade on the Whitehall side, those two guys that stand there in their yeah. boxes with the, the you know, the, uh, because there were no tourists there. So I thought this would be really... Good. And it's quite interesting, you know. You can see the tarmac all the way down Whitehall, the tarmac on across Trafalgar Square. It was incredible, you know. And um, uh, so uh, um, that was an incredible, incredible moment in time, actually. I think. And actually, the day after that, because one of the guards got in touch with me, the day after that, they the the, the, the Queen's Guard stood down for the first time in their history of 350 years. It was quite incredible. Yeah. Um, but it'd be nice to get get back and just start painting life coming back to normal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah it might look different for a while. It'd be interesting to kind of capture that transition. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah very, very, very weird. I mean, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, just people in parks and how they're behaving in parks and stuff like that. You know. so, anyway, yeah, so get out and paint. That's what I'll do as soon as I can. Well, cheers to that. That's uh, something to look forward to. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's been really, really lovely to catch up with you this afternoon. Thank you very, very much and uh, look forward to seeing you soon.